So we now move on to dynamics in inclined planes, the fifth section in the applications of forces chapter. So uh, maybe a few little things, little tips uh, for doing these types of questions. So typically we may have a some sort of mass on a on an incline. Let's say we've got a mass of M. So you're going to have a normal reaction there. Uh, depending on the way that it's moving, let's say, say that this is just sliding down on its own that way, then uh, you would have your frictional force of mu r that way. Um, if it was moving the opposite direction, let's color code it. So let's say it was moving or accelerating up the slope, then your frictional force would be going this way. So you'll have one or the other. You'll have the stuff that's in red or in blue. Uh, we'll need to put in the mass of the object or the weight, so you'll have mg. We'll work out what the components of, of that is. So if this is theta, this would be uh, mg cos theta here, and this would be mg sine theta here. Um, that's probably pretty much it. You may have some other forces on there. Um, we may have things like uh, pulleys. We've got maybe like a, a pulley on a slope. I think that comes in the next section where you've got connected particles. Uh, but what we need to remember with this is that they're, they're often a combination of SUVAT and F equals MA. So don't forget your SUVAT is this and your F equals MA is here. So this is the connection between the two is the acceleration. So you would look at the forces in something on a slope. You'd be looking at forces uh, this way and this way. And you'd use those forces to help you work out what the acceleration is. They would be unbalanced forces in this case. So you'd need to work out what the resultant force is. And uh, once you've done that, you can use that to find the acceleration. And then once you've got the acceleration, you can then use SUVAT. And often these things may be start at rest. So if you see um, something like initially at rest, that tells you that U is zero. If you see something like it comes to rest, that means that v is zero so look out for those uh, types of things right so let's start off by drawing a diagram for this our particles held at rest are on a rough plane so we're going to have some friction so there's my plane there and it tells me that the tan of that angle alpha so tan alpha is 0 0.75 which is three quarters so you know our little trick for working out the exact values of sine alpha and cos alpha so sine alpha that's going to be um, three over five three fifths and cos alpha is going to be 4 over 5 so we've put those to one side so let's I'm going to draw my particle as a uh, a block um, if we're given a coefficient of friction we're not given the mass so let's just call that M for mass I reckon at some point all the M's are going to cancel out so we've got the weight as mg Let's put these bits in here and then we'll look at the friction in a moment. So this is alpha. So this would be mg cos alpha. And this bit down here would be mg sine alpha. Like that. We have a normal reaction there. Now it's, it says it's held at, at, at rest. Um, on this uh, plane 
um, and it says when a particle is released it slides down the plane so if it's sliding down the plane it's accelerating down the plane that means that our friction is acting in the opposite direction so this is going to be mu r and we're told that mu is 0.5 so in fact this is 0.5 r right so we've got all our forces on the diagram we're now ready to answer this question so part a we want to work out the acceleration of the particle so that's going to be uh, using uh, f equals ma so let's start by resolving parallel to the plane now often you might see this resolving parallel to the plane uh, I'm not going to use that just in case you think R is normal reaction. I'm just going to draw the arrow to show right we're, we're looking at the forces parallel to the plane. And parallel to the plane, since it's going down the slope, uh, the bigger force is going down is going to be the mg sine alpha. So mg sine alpha. Take away the mu r or the 0.5 r. And that will equal ma, the mass times acceleration, mass times acceleration. So resultant force equals mass times acceleration. Now we are missing r. So the way that we can find r is to resolve perpendicular to the plane. And perpendicular to the plane, you're going to have r equals mg cos alpha. So r equals mg cos alpha now cos alpha we've worked out is four fifths it's four fifths worked out down the bottom so what we're going to have is r equals four fifths mg so if we now put these two equations together we'll have mg sine alpha here now that sine alpha is three fifths so we'll have three fifths g so three fifths mg sorry not three fifths g three fifths mg so that's the mg sine alpha minus 0 0.5 times r so 0 0.5 times r and r is four fifths mg equals ma so i've just substituted the second equation to the first you'll notice every term has m in so they're all going to cancel out so from that we can get that the acceleration is going to be three fifths g minus so half of four fifths is two fifths g which is a fifth g now I can leave my answer like that is exact g over 5 or a fifth g or if I do one fifth times by 9.8 I will get let's do that again 1.96 so a fifth g or 1.96 g and that's meters per second squared. So there's my acceleration. So I've got the acceleration of SUVA, which I can now use in the second part of the question because it says the distance it slides in the first two seconds. Right. So if we're using um, SUVA in this part of the question, part B, S U V A T. How far does it slide in the first two seconds? Acceleration is 1.9696. Uh, it starts at rest, it's held at rest. So that's zero and we want to find S. So we're gonna use S equals UT plus half a t squared and we just need to substitute in we don't need to rearrange it so zero equals zero times two 
plus half times 1.96 times by 2 squared. Work that out and see what we get. So obviously the 0 times 2 cancels out. So half times 1.96 times 4, 2 squared, gives me 90 over 25, which is 3.92. And it's going to be meters because it's how far. So 3.92 meters is going to be the distance it travels in the first two seconds. Similar type of question here, but this time there's another external force that's pushing it up the slope. Right, so let's draw what this looks like. So we've got this slope there. We have an angle of 10 degrees we have a box of mass 2 kg so we will have 2g down here we have a normal reaction here um, and given that the coefficient of friction between the box and the plane is 0 0.3 find the acceleration um, of the box now it's being pushed up by a horizontal force a force like this of 25 newtons which means that friction is acting that way mu r and in this case mu is 0 0.3 so it's 0 0.3 r for our frictional force now we're going to have to work out the horizontal and vertical components or parallel and perpendicular components of these forces which i'll put in purple this is 10 degrees because it's alternate angle to the the slope one we'll put this one here again this angle is 10 degrees because it's uh perpendicular it's uh always the same angle as the angle of the slope so let's put these values in so um over here we're going to have uh, 2g cos 10 and here we'll have 2g sine 10. Over here we'll have 25 cos 10. And here we will have 25 sine 10. Now because we need r to get mu r, we need to resolve both parallel and perpendicular to the slope. So I'm going to start by um, resolving perpendicular to the slope. And so I will have R, which goes up, will equal, now I've got the 25 sine 10, which is uh, a component of the force being pushed horizontally. And the 2g sine 10 okay so that basically gives me the uh, sorry 2g cos 10 that basically gives me r yeah so i could probably stick that in the equation for r when i want r in a moment and if i resolve parallel to the slope now because it's accelerating the upwards forces are greater than the downwards forces which means to find the uh, resultant force the pushing up force is 25 cos 10 the downward forces are the mu r so minus 0 0.3 r and the 2g sine 10 2g sine 10 and that's going to give me the mass times acceleration so 2a so actually we could just substitute uh, this equation here into where r is and divide the whole lot by 2 to get a so a equals and it's going to be half of 
all of this because we're basically dividing it by 2 and I want 2a, 1a, 25 cos 10, 25 cos 10 minus 0.3r, now r is all of this, 25 sine 10 plus, that's a 10 not a 20, plus uh, 2g cos 10. So we've got um, 0.3r, yet yeah, minus 2g sine 10. So we can type all of that in on our calculator to get the acceleration. So that gives me something like 7. Point, I'll write the whole thing down. 7.061829. Blah blah blah. So A, three significant figures, 7.06 meters per second squared. So there we go, there's our acceleration. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 70 on pages 148 to 150 of the Stats and Mechanics Year 2 book.